to you. Hi everyone, thanks for having me here today. So you just heard my name is Sammy Craven. I run a copywriting and content business called Craven Content. I uh, thought I'd start with a sort of bit of a background about me. So I didn't finish school. I haven't been to university. My background is actually in admin, admin sorry, and finance planning. Um, but I've always loved to write. And so about three years ago, I started a blog. It was actually a dating blog. So I used to write about all my dating experiences. Um, I'm not doing it anymore, but it's still online. If anyone wants to have a bit of a laugh and read, it's called Craven of the City. So I started that, that did quite well. Um, and then I wanted to find out a way how to actually earn an income for, to, for helping people write. So I started my business on the side and then about 15 months ago, I quit my job and started it full time. So, and the main part of my business is helping small businesses to blog. It's quite hard though to get business owners to understand firstly what a blog is and secondly what the benefits of having a blog to market their business. So today I thought I'd share, you, share with you the benefits of having a blog for a business. Um, so, what is a blog? I'm assuming you all know what a blog is, yes? So I'll check because I don't know what your level is. <laughs> um, what you may not know though is it used to be called a weblog and in about 1999, so not that long ago, they started to call it a blog. Um, there's a big difference between copywriting and blog writing. Um, a blog should not sell, um, that's not the point. The point is to engage, educate and entertain. So that's what you need to think about when you're writing a blog. Um, how do you structure a blog? Now, a blog should look nice, but structuring it correctly will also help people find you, find your blog, find your website. So the first thing you've got to think about is a headline. It needs to be a powerful headline. Um, you know, it needs to make people go, oh my God, this blog so it sounds so good, I have to read this blog. And then once you put them in the headline, the introduction needs to be interesting as well because you want them to keep reading. Another really important thing is subheadings. Um, people have a very short attention span these days. Um, apparently now online it's about eight seconds, which is actually shorter than the attention span of a goldfish, which is crazy. So having the subheadings helps you because people tend to skim read. So you need those throughout the blog to get them interested and help them read through. Um, subheadings also help with Google as well, which I'll explain later. Um, 500 words, that's about the average blog that I write for my clients. Google says you need a minimum of about 350 words. Um, it, images in the blog help as well. Um, again, it just helps them interested because people like pictures. Um, conclusion, reiterate the main point that you want them to get from the book at the end and also call to action is very important. Depending on what your business is or what the blog is, what the goal is, the call to action can of course be different. So for example, I wrote a blog yesterday for one of my clients who's a life coach and I was writing about meditation. So at the end I said, if you need help to try and incorporate meditation into your daily routine, call me to book a free coaching call. So something along those lines as well at the end. Um, what are the benefits of a blog? So SEO, do you all know what SEO is? I'm not getting any nods or yes, so I'm not sure, but anyway. <laughs> something going to focus on later, yeah. okay. So with my clients, I don't even really bother to use that term. It means nothing to them. Um, but I'll, again, I'll touch on that. Value, by doing the blog you're providing value because you're providing information. Engagement, it's helping you engage. It's providing you with credibility and authority, showing that you know what you're, talk, what you're talking about. Um, it's also provide, providing you with content to post on social media, which is also really important. Um, so that brings me to SEO, I won't go into this too much, but basically, what I say to my clients is by having a blog, you're regularly adding new content to your website. And every time you add new content to your website, you're helping Google recognize you. 
it's one more index page. So you're basically saying, hi Google, I'm here. Um, so it's really important to do that to help people find you. That makes sense. Um, writing blogs for Google, another big point is you can't just put some words up on the page and expect results. Google likes a certain way for things to be done. So you need to know what, the, what Google likes and what they don't like. Um, so one of the, the main things that you have to think about when you're writing a blog is to incorporate the right keywords. Keywords are key. Um, your content must be original. That's very important. Um, you must include page links, so you might want to direct them to different pages through, throughout the blog. Um, you need to make your sentences short and sharp to make it easier to read. And you need to write in active voice instead of passive voice. Um, you may want to Google that. There's some really good articles on Yoast SEO explaining that. And there's also tools in Word that help you see you know, which sentences are active, which are passive, and how to change that. You need to use transition words as well, which helps get to the next sentence. So for example, you know, and therefore, such as, things like that as well. So they're the main things that Google likes. Um, keywords, why are keywords so important? Does anyone know? Anyone want to guess? No? Oh, yes? Yeah, there's that. That's part of it. That's one part of it. And then the second part of it is it helps you get found because you're thinking about what people are going to search for. So if I'm helping a business get found, um, so let's say I work with a Perth plumber, um, you're likely going to type in Perth plumber if you're going to find one, right? But I wouldn't help them rank for Perth plumber because if you can imagine how many plumbers are in Perth, and how many plumbers are trying to rank for that same keyword, unless you're gonna pay Google AdWords thousands per month, you're not gonna get there. So I would be saying, okay, who's your ideal client? Where are they? Um, let's help you rank for that. So we might be saying plumber, Dalkeith, plumber, Netherlands, if they wanna rank for the Western suburbs, if his favorite thing to do is fix leaky taps, will focus on blogs for leaky taps, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so before I do blogs with my clients, I do my research. I found out which keywords they're currently ranking for, which ones they're not, and which ones they would like to. And I base all my blogs around those keywords. So I use topics in the content plan around that, if that makes sense. Um, I see what keywords other competitors are using as well. There's compared competitors on the first page, what are they doing? Do they have a blog? Are they doing a lot on social media? Which keywords are they using? Um, and don't keyword cram, that's a big thing. I don't know if you've ever seen on a website, you go to their the page and they've got Perth, 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 Perth in there a hundred times. It looks stupid and Google doesn't like it. It doesn't read well, it doesn't even make sense. Google smart, they know what you're trying to do, so that's not gonna help you. So you need to keep it subtle. Um, original content, so same as you, as at university, no plagiarism is allowed. Um, content in your blogs and on your website must be completely original. If you copy and paste it over, there's actually SEO tools that know that you're doing that, and Google knows. There's, somehow they know, I don't know how, but um, there's a timestamp, so if someone else has written something last year and you paste it onto your web website a year later, you're gonna rank lower. Um, so that's a big thing as well. So one of the reasons why I charge quite a lot for my blogs because I spend the time to research and write completely original content. Um, you know, you can get blogs on Fiverr, things like that for $20. So my clients say, why are you charging now? So, well, because Again, I think I said before, credibility and authority, it's its huge. It just shows that you know what you're talking about, gives you a chance to showcase your knowledge and your expertise. Um, 
social media. So this is a big thing as well. Who sometimes finds it hard to know what to post on social media? Yes. <laughs> That happens to me all the time. I, unless I have a plan, I end up posting a picture of a glass of wine or something. And sometimes I do that a bit too much, which my clients must be thinking how much she looks if she drinks a lot of wine. <laughs> so, so it's all right to do that occasionally, but you really need to have a plan, otherwise you're just gonna end up posting crap. And sometimes it's better to post nothing at all. Um, so a blog I find really helps with this because let's say I do a monthly blog for a client, I'll say, okay, we're gonna have a theme this month. So, you know, what do you want to target in your business this month? Um, so we're going to surround, we're going to write a blog based on what you want to target. We're going to take snippets of that blog and post it all over our social media. One blog can probably get you about 10 Instagram captions. Um, we're going to post it on LinkedIn, we're going to post it on Facebook. They might want to do a video for it on YouTube. Some of my clients will actually film some stuff and then I'll watch it and write my blog based on what they've filmed. Um, so there's that as well. You don't need to read the wheel. You can you know, push all the content out to different um, places. You can also recy recycle it as well. Um, so yeah, the more social media content, the more engagement. The more engagement my clients have, the more clients we're going to get. Um, oh, I missed that one thing. We do that with the newsletter as well. We send out the blog too. So that's all part of it. Um, value. Yeah, that's probably the biggest, I say that's a huge thing because you're provi providing value for free. You're not selling, you're not asking them for anything in return. You're just being nice. You're saying, here you go. Here's some advice. Here's some info. Um, and this will help you be remembered, respected, valued and liked. I have clients who I have now who have followed me on LinkedIn for about 12 months because I, I regularly provide tips. I haven't heard from them, but they've come to me you know, a few months down the track and said, I think what you're doing is great. I can see you know what you're doing. I'd now like to engage you. Um, so even if they don't use you as well, they might refer you because you're posting content, you're providing them value, you're showing them that you know what you're doing and you're being in the back of their mind. Um, so they're, yeah, they're the main points I wanted to cover. I'm not sure how I'm going for time, but does, are, there, are there any points that I've covered that I've touched on that people want me to elaborate on or does anyone have any questions based on what I've said? And you can speak about your assessment plan and what you're doing for your blogs at the moment. Anything that you want to clarify, because this is a perfect time to ask an expert. So if Google um, picks up keywords, is it, is it just in the heading or is it in the whole text as well? Good question. It's the whole text, however, the heading, the subheading, and the conclusion and the call to action are the most important parts. So you can include it throughout the text, but it's very important to include it in the heading and your subheadings first and foremost. How many keywords would you say is enough for one post? Good question. Um, they say that no more than 5% of your words should be the keywords, if that makes sense. So um, I'm so bad at maths. Yeah. Roughly, yeah. If you yeah, if you make it, you know, you can't make most of the blog the key the keywords. A, it won't make sense. And B, <laughs> and B again, you're doing the keyword crap thing. So I like to pick two keywords per post. So I'll have one keyword or key phrase. Um, you know, for example, plumber Dale Keith that I'll focus on. So I'll try and use that at least three three times. And then I might have a secondary keyword if he wants to focus on. Tanks, and I'll make sure I use that a few times as well. But oh, I would probably only, only, only use each thing about three or five times. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, you said you can like reuse media on Instagram and stuff like that. You know how some companies you go basically the same photo or whatever. How do you keep it interesting? Like how do you change it instead of you know it just throwing the same thing in your 
Especially on LinkedIn, that's actually been the best place for me. I mean, that's how you found me. Um, people, I started to, you know, um, 
showcase myself as an expert. I still don't quite see myself as an expert because I'm trying to, you know, get my <laughs> confidence going. But because I put all that out there, I'm now being seen as an expert. It takes time. It's probably taken me about 12 months to actually get anything from it. But I'm now getting people who see the things that I post contact me. Um, and it's all about as well. It's being, as you were saying before, being a bit vulnerable, being all authentic, being real. That's the biggest thing that I do. You know, like I share my, I share my why. I share why I do what I do, that's the biggest thing. I actually suffered from a severe childhood stutter. And yeah, so for me to be speaking right now is still like, a, yeah, it's huge. So I share that, I say, well, I used to write because I couldn't get across what I, what, what, what I wanted to say in speech. And the amount of people who have actually contacted me about that, I've got that on my website as well. Because, you know, if they've got two different content writers that they can choose from, some pe some people might see me and say, oh, "Wow, you know, she's just shared this. Like, this is cool. Like, they'll actually relate to me in some way." So that helps as well. Does that does that answer your question? Actually, the answer to your question is on the slide. Is it the biggest word is your answer? Value. So it's about creating value. Yeah. What are you putting out to your communications that is giving value to the person that's seeing it? It might be entertainment value. It might be education value. It might be that engagement value. So it comes back to that four E framework that we've been talking about, and we'll see that framework throughout the whole semester. So it's about creating value, but ultimately what you need to do as a business, you need customers. So as a business, you're doing all this stuff to ensure that you get brand awareness, that people engage with you, and ultimately that they purchase your products, services, experiences, whatever it is that you're offering to the market. So you know, you're trying to meet your KPIs, you're trying to be a successful brand, and that's why you're doing this. So that's that's the answer. Yeah. Value. I hope that helps. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? If we have time for any questions. I've got a question, but there's no <laughs> <laughs> It comes back to what we were talking about before the lecture. Okay. So um, uh, you know, as we can see here, you've got a number of different clients and you write for these companies, for these you know, all clients that we've got. So you have to put yourself in a persona for that brand. Yeah. So to be able to tell that brand story, that brand message, to meet the objectives with your communications. Yeah, absolutely. So can you give us any tips on developing a persona for your brand? Yeah. Should it be a personal brand yeah. or be it a corporate brand? Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Yeah, okay. That's a hard one. It was hard to start off with, especially because, you know, as you can imagine, I started off writing my daily blog. So that was fun, casual, that was me, so I could just be me. But I work with so many different clients. So let's say I've got um, a plumber, I've got an electrician, I've got a lawyer, I've got a life coach, I've got a personal trainer, I've got a beautician, I've got um, someone who makes big jerky, I've got like so many different clients. Um, teacher, you know, all sorts of different stuff. So I struggled to start with, you know, how the hell, because I can't sound like me. Um, so I find, I spend a lot of time with the client at first. I do a create a creative brief. I spend time with them. I meet them in person. I find out about them, who they are, how they started their business, what their why is, who their ideal clients are. Because I need to, as well as sound sounding like this per, this person, I need to speak to their clients. So if they're targeting tradesmen or you know average Joe or whatever, um, I should I should use dif different language, different words. You know, I wouldn't think of a word right now, but I wouldn't speak to them like I'd speak to a lawyer's client or a financial planner's person, it's different. So I spend time with them, work out who they are. Um, you know, for, I worked with a construction company recently. The guys were so relaxed, casual, friendly, kind, personable, all that sort of thing. And I picked up their language. I picked up the words that they used. I took note of that. And I use those words and that kind of language within their blogs. And I make sure that they come across as the as the personable, casual people that they are, because that shows, you know, that's their, their brand, that's really how they want to be perceived. And I also, you know, spend time to find out who their ideal client is and try and speak specifically to them. 
as well. So, I, is that an answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions? More questions? Thank you so much. No worries. <laughs> Thank you for having me. We like to treat our uh, oh. guest presenters nicely, so that's oh. a big Thank appreciation you. for you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Nice. And I've got a little, little something for later today. Thank you. Thanks so much. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, so let's listen from uh, from Kobe now. So as mentioned, Kobe is um, is the manager of Jets Midland, and you're doing some wonderful stuff with yeah, Jets. You. So I'd um, uh, love to hear what you're doing on social media. And over to you. Perfect. Um, hi, guys. First of all, thank you for having me today. Um, thank you to Ben, who, who's one of my clients there. He works out at Jets, as you can see. Um, he's got me on board, so thank you, Ben, for that. Um, I thought I'd start as well just explaining um, where I came from, myself, uh, and how I got into this role. So it actually goes a bit further back than the Jets role with social media. I was uh, playing basketball in Brisbane. Um, if any of you guys like, are from there or not, I was playing Kabulcha, which is pretty much like Midland over here. Um, so I didn't really stray too far from home. I um, played there for eight months. While I was there, I decided, you know, basketball isn't like football. For those of AFL, you know that there's club changing, there's a club culture, it's, you know, you train all the time, it's really good with basketball. It's very social unless you play a high level. Um, so over there I decided I started this club um, with a couple of mates, all really young, all about anywhere from 18 to 21. Um, we sat down at a table, created the idea, uh, we spent you know, a good while actually creating our identity and we really wanted to focus on culture, that's what we came up with, culture is really wanting to focus on. Um, that along with obviously getting kids off the street, you know, putting basketball back on the map as much as we could in the Midland area. Um, and from that, we, we kind of, like same Sam was saying, kind of winged it with social media. We, uh, we knew that was the biggest way to go in, in the time we started, so with a little bit of research ourselves, going online, finding out what, what works, what doesn't, what other clubs are doing, uh, and believe it or not, a lot of Barcelona clubs in, in WA aren't doing much on social media, so we learned a lot from that. Um, through that, I think in the first day we got, we got almost 500 likes or something crazy like that for this really small club, um, and that was purely from just some of the tips that I'll show you guys in a second. Um, from then, we've grown, we became club of the year, um, a little bit of a, a boast there. Uh, I think it was a, maybe eight months after starting, which is pretty massive for us. Uh, and now we have 22 teams across Kalamunda, Morley, Midland, um, Warwick. Uh, yeah, so so social media was, was our, the main reason for that. You know, obviously word of mouth helped. You know, kids love the club, they got their friends on board. Um, but their friends found us through social media. We don't have a clubhouse, we don't have a uh, contact number other than my mobile phone. There's no like office to go into. Everything's run through social media. We get inboxes, we get emails through our platform. Um, and that's the only reason why we group was the social media. So um, then I, I'm still studying, so I'm still here. I'm at ECU, which is pretty lucky. Believe it or not, I'm not going to my lecture today to be here in a different lecture. Um, so yeah, I'm studying here doing sports science. Um, then lucky enough to get this gig as, as manager, and they're giving me less hours so I can still study and, and run the gym. Um, and without, without talking too much about the, the old manager, who's still a good friend of, of ours, um, he was just never into social media. He didn't really know how it worked, his own personal social media. Uh, he was a bit older, he wasn't really a fan of it. Um, so it kind of gave me a really good way to start. You know, it gave me a good way to show the boss I knew what I was doing. Um, stepped in and just, just threw a few things in that, that worked with Spartans um, and worked really, really well with Jets. So um, if it all works, I know what group presentations at our uni are like and things don't always work. Awesome. All right, sister club, Spartans Bars WA. Um, have you guys gone into insights before with Facebook pages? Have you had a chance to look at that? A few nods, yeah. So this is really powerful. When you start your own business, you guys are really lucky. So you're in a position now where um, if you haven't started a business yet, you're going to get all this knowledge um, and then, then you can wing it and you've already got this knowledge behind you. So you guys are already 10 steps ahead of, of both of us when you started. So um, it's something I've actually considered doing is, is, is getting into marketing because it's so handy. Um, so you go into your insights and it shows, shows you everything, yeah? We've, um, as you can see, our post, post reach is going down. And I'm actually surprised not to see a few more negatives. We've changed our. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm like, I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> um, you'll see what it pops up in a sec. Yeah, so we're. Um, there's a few negative points in there. We've just changed our committee over. So we actually haven't touched social media for a few weeks, which is a big no no when you're running a business. Obviously, like you're saying before, you got to constantly put out content. Only way to stay out there, only way to um, be seen by everyone. And you work group presentation. Right? It's always, always something goes. Sorry yeah, right. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, anyway, with the insights, and hopefully I can show you in a second, um, it shows you everything down to your reach. That's the most important thing. So um, as you know, when you go on social media, you don't always like things. Um, you don't always comment.